Ahead on Q2, worries over water. This was all filled, as you can see, and so they had to take out the, the molding. A local nonprofit flooded and now forced to move. Plus, a unique after school activity. It's a hobby that can turn into a lifestyle. That's the joke that we like to make a lot. And it's like, oh, you play for a bit, but after a while, that's all you want. Two Billings men looking to open up a whole new world to kids. The MTN 430 News begins right now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Thursday. I'm Haley Monaco. This evening, a local nonprofit with a mission of helping people living with disabilities live independent lives is now being forced to leave its longtime home after it flooded recently. Most everything in the building a near total loss. But the business, as Q2's Alina Howder tells us, is focused on finding a positive. There's water damage as far as the eye can see here at Lyft. You can see how the flooding eroded their baseboards. The nonprofit services have been halted for at least a week, but they're saying that they're looking at it as a blessing in disguise. I sucked up seven gallons of water just in 20 minutes. It's been a heck of a week for Lyft's financial director, Deborah Costa, and her colleagues. See the wetness on the ground. This was all filled, as you can see, and so they've had to take out the the molding. A burst pipe over the weekend destroyed the carpets, the flooring, the drywall. The furniture, more than 90% of our furniture is made of particle board and it absorbed water. The flooding forced Lyft to close for a week with many of their employees working remotely. Most of our operation is downstairs and it's been affected. We estimated that not being uh, open to the public we fail to help 50 persons a day and maybe take 200 telephone calls a day. Last year, Lyft served 2,500 disabled individuals in the region. We are in front of my apartment. Vern Anderson, who has cerebral palsy, was the very first person Lyft served when it opened 37 years ago. Lyft means my independence. Lyft sends three personal care assistants to check in on Vern so that he doesn't have to rely on assisted living. I wouldn't be able to a, live on my own, and B, be able to have, have the f freedoms that I do out in the community also. Though Lyft's current facility is flooded, there's a silver lining. It's just almost like the universe is saying, no, you gotta move now because I have a lot of plans for you. The nonprofit was set to move to what used to be St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in April. So this will be our new PCA office. But with that flooding, they're moving in this month. It just increased the speed uh, that change was happening. And uh, believe it or not, uh, change became a part of our life, and we welcome that. Making the best of a soggy situation. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. The nonprofit is seeking donations after the flood. Find out how to give by clicking on this story at ktvq.com. A 19-year-old Billings Group home worker is facing a charge of deliberate homicide after he allegedly beat a 37-year-old disabled resident to death. According to Billings Police, Dante Guerra was initially arrested and charged with aggravated assault following the incident February 5th at the home in the 200 block of Westchester Square North. The man, who was taken to the hospital, ended up dying on February 16th, and investigators determined the injuries suffered during the assault contributed to his death. The Yellowstone County Attorney's Office amended the charge and he appeared in court this morning. He is not listed on the Yellowstone County Jail roster as of right now. On this Thursday, I'm up here at the Yellowstone Kelly gravesite overlooking Billings. A beautiful day. There's just a couple clouds outside. Temperatures not as warm as you'd expect with all this sunshine, but it is going to start warming. Now, as we look forward into the future, not only seven days out, but how about from next Thursday through the following Wednesday, 
the Intermountain West, and specifically Montana and a good portion of Wyoming, have a better chance for above average temperatures. Doesn't mean we're not going to have cold mornings or below average daytime highs, but it is leaning in the favor of an above average time period for us. As far as the precipitation is concerned, we have a better chance for a good portion of Montana for slightly drier than average weather. Doesn't mean we're not going to get any chances for rain or snow, but we're going to have a chance of drier than average weather going forward. As you can see, things are pretty dry around here right now. We would love to have some rain and snow in the next seven days. And Ed's going to have your seven day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Montana welcomed roughly 5,000 new businesses in February. According to the Secretary of State, Christy Jacobson, that is 200 more businesses than this time last year. The Secretary of State's office is providing a one-time fee waiver for all Montana businesses filing their annual report. But you must file before April 15th. In 2023, 59,000 new businesses were registered in Montana. You've probably heard of the sport of fencing, where participants duel each other with swords. But what about LARPing? The live-action role-play game is centered in the world of fantasy, where people pretend to be characters while participating in physical activity. In tonight's Positively Montana, our Marcus Kakova introduces us to two men on a mission to introduce Billings to this unusual activity. Positively Montana is sponsored by Yellowstone Valley Electric Cooperative. This is not where I expect this story to begin. This location is ominous, I will agree with that. But it's the place the Sons of Odin call home. Teaching people the fundamentals of how to wield a weapon, how to fight, and how to play the general scope of most live action role playing games that are out there. Home, even when it's devoid of students, completely empty because no one shows up for their evening LARPing classes. Unfortunately, I have this thing called Buck Luck. My name is Buck, and, it's like, and that luck is not great sometimes. Save your tears because these two cosplaying crusaders say they aren't giving up. Initially, it's, it's almost uh, discouraging, but I've lived here for 28 years. I know how this city works. Um, either things blow up immediately or it takes a little bit for things to gain traction. You see, they're on a campaign in the name of affordable fun with their camp pad armor and PVC based armaments. Cost of entry should be uh, your willingness to participate, not two or three hundred dollars for sports gear that you're going to outgrow in a year. And they don't care what others may think while they set out on this adventure. I love being there. You're too embarrassed to do this. <sighs> Who's really the loser here? They say fortune lies with those who have imagination. Um, I grew up poor. Um, I grew up with my father always working multiple jobs um, and being a soldier and still not having enough money. I've always been lost in the other world, man. I, th this world is boring. Imagination, the key to freedom from the weight of reality. The struggles on the outside all fade away when I'm doing this stuff. So uh, even when I'm in my gear now, it's kind of hard to think about my woes because I'm enjoying myself. Um, but there aren't many. I'm taking care of my mom, living in a single uh, one-room uh, house, paying too much for rent like everyone else, um, and trying to find a way out. Everyone seems to have lost their imaginations these days. It's nice to be able to find it. Marcus Kakova, MTN News. Glacier National Park says it hosted 2.9 million visitors in 2023. According to the park, visits were up 1% from the previous year and ranked the sixth busiest in the park's history. However, visitation has remained at about 3 million mark for the past five years. The numbers come as Glacier National Park continues to refine a vehicle res reservation program aimed at spreading traffic throughout the day particularly around attractions like going to the Sun Road. The park says the reservation system has resulted in fewer closures and improved traffic management. Still to come on the MTN 430 News on Q2, March Madness on the hardwood. 
state tournaments tipping off across the state. We'll have all of the highlights in just a bit. But up next, another calm day outside. But what's the weekend looking like? Ed will let us know right after this. 